give my two cents at the end. Uh, regardless, comment. Wait, you guys please participate with me in this. Comment a one if you think I'm right. That this guy doesn't like women in power or, you know, or maybe he's lightweight racist. I don't know. Or comment a two if I'm just totally dead wrong and he's just fighting for his client. I don't know. I don't know. Or maybe it's both. Comment three if you think it's both. All right. Thanks, guys. I'll see you at the end. Uh, Carlos. Leonardo Carlos. Court is calling 2023 CR 8667. State of Texas versus Leonardo Carlos. Can I have parties announced for the record for the state? Daniel Clark. Defense. George Sherman on behalf of Ms. Carlos. Are you Mr. Carlos? Counsel, have you received all the discovery? Did you review it with your client? I did. Court will find that the state is in compliance with discovery. Uh, Mr. Carlos, did you review the document entitled True Bill of Indictment with your attorney? Yes. And did you understand it? Yes, Counsel, do you waive the reading of the indictment? We do, Judge. State, are you proceeding on the indictment as presented? Yeah, Judge. Showing you what's entitled application for community supervision. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Yes, Did sir. you sign it? Sure. Showing you what's entitled court admonishments and defendants waivers and affidavit of admonitions. Did you review that document with your attorney? Yes, Did sir. you? Did you understand it? Did you sign it in all the appropriate places? Yes, sir. Did you understand you're charged with driving while intoxicated third or more? That's a third degree felony. Range of punishment is anywhere from two to ten years in prison and up to ten thousand dollar fine. If you have a plea with the state, the court does not have to follow your plea. If for any reason the court does not follow your plea and gives you more than you bargained for, the fact that you entered a plea will not be used against you and you will be allowed to withdraw your plea. Did you understand? Yes, sir. Did you understand you have a right to jury trial, a right for you or your attorney to cross-examine and confront any witnesses the state would call in the right to remain silent? Yes, sir. Did you understand by entering this plea you were giving up those rights? Yes, sir. Did you intend to give up those rights and enter into a plea in this case? Yes, sir. Counsel, has your client been able to provide you with any defenses? He has. Do you believe he has a rational as well as a factual understanding of the charges of, against him? Yes. Do you believe he's currently competent and was legally sane at the time of the offense? Yes. Mr. Carlos, has anyone threatened you, coerced you, or placed you in fear to get you to enter the plea? No, no, no. Anyone promised you anything other than the plea? No, no. Satisfied with the way you've been represented? Yes, sir. No. Are you a U.S. citizen? Yes, sir. No. Court will find that defendant has knowingly and voluntarily waived his right to jury trial? Showing you the plea bargain page. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? I'm sure. According to the plea, punishment is to be assessed at five years in the prison. There's a $500 fine. State recommends community supervision. This will run concurrent with county court cause number 710098, 71099. Take in consideration 2023 CR 6643, county court cause number 713955. 713958, ignition interlock for half the term, victim impact panel, and DWI intervention. Did you understand that to be your plea? Yes, sir. Defense, is that the plea? Uh, the plea includes uh, an option of either 10 years uh, jail, 10 days jail. That's outside the plea bargain agreement. It's in our plea bargain. No, it's outside. It is part of our plea bargain. What I'm telling you, counsel, is this is your plea bargain agreement. This is outside the agreement. Well, it is my understanding it's part of our plea bargain. All right, it is, I'm telling everybody it's not a part of the plea bargain agreement. Note, this is what it reads. Note, the parties are not allowed to make binding agreements regarding the length of community supervision or the terms and condition of community supervision, which are totally dependent upon the court's dis discretion. The following recommendations do not constitute part of the formal plea bargain agreement. However, the state or both parties make the following non-binding recommendations. And what it says is five years community supervision, TAP evaluation, 120 hours of community service restitutions, two year dr driver's license suspension, 10 days house arrest in lieu of 10 days Bear County Jail. That's not a part of your plea bargain agreement. You all can present that to me and I can either follow it or not follow it, but that's not a part of the plea. Is the five years probation part of our? No, it is not. The court so, determines the length of a probation. And if you reject that five years, then it's a rejection of the 
plea bargain of plea. No, if I don't follow your length or your suggestion for the length of probation and I give you, let's say I were to give you eight years on probation or four years on probation, that's not a part of your plea bargain agreement and I have not violated your plea bargain agreement because the court determines the length of probation, not attorneys. Then judge, uh, I think we can't go forward with this because our understanding of what a plea bargain agreement differs. All right, well, what I'm telling you all, according to the law, you mm -hmm. cannot come before the court and tell the court, I wanna be on probation for five years only. Y'all are not allowed to enter that agreement, period. Now, Jack, you do not have to follow that agreement. That is, that is not a part of your plea bargain agreement, counsel. The court decides the length of probation that somebody is on. The attorneys do not. The attorneys just make a suggestion. I'm going to read it again. Note, the parties are not allowed to make binding agreements regarding the length of community supervision or the terms and conditions of community supervision, which are totally dependent upon the court's discretion. The following recommendations do not constitute part of the formal plea bargain agreement. Is probation and then, part of the agreement? Yes, they're recommending probation. Now, if, for example, if I were to say, okay, you guys have agreed that he's to have probation and I say I'm not giving you probation, then I will have violated your plea bargain agreement. But the length of time, the conditions, that's completely up to me. You all can't enter into a plea bargain agreement telling the court what your conditions will be. That is not my understanding of the practice in this county. Well, if people are practicing that different in this county, and I, I you know, don't want to be mean to anybody, but if people are practicing that differently, then they are practicing the law incorrectly because the court decides the length of probation. Nobody else does. Defense attorneys don't decide the length of probation. The uh, state doesn't decide the length of probation. The court does. Nobody else does. Well, I guess, I guess my uh, concern is moot at this point, unless you do not follow our agreement. Well, the question becomes, what do y'all think you have agreed to? Because if you think you've agreed to how long he's going to be on probation, that's not a part of your agreement. So if you all want to reread your contract, you're more than welcome to reread the contract. If you all want to go forward, you can go forward. Well, Judge, I... I guess I need to review that comment. Sure. And uh, we'll come back to you. All right. And State, if you want to show him. In other words, based on the court's understanding. No, based upon, I mean, based upon the law, councils do not get to determine the length of probation or the conditions of probation. That's not my understanding. That's the law. If people want to get that law changed. They need to talk to the legislature. Well, uh, it's been the my understanding in this practice in this county that the judges well, allow us to do that. Well, I don't um, want to disparage any judge, but guess what? They're wrong because according to the law, according to that document that y'all have just signed, the court determines the length of probation. Nobody else determines the length of probation. The court does. So if I want to give, if the state is asking for eight years probation as the length, I can say, you know what? I've read the facts of this case. I think the person should only be on probation for four years or three years. That's up to me. Or the state may say, eh, me and the defense counsel believe the person should be on probation for five years. I may read it and think, no, that person should be on probation for more than five years. I'm allowed to do that. And guess what? That is not going against the plea bargain agreement that you've entered to. So if y'all want to discuss that, you can. But if other judges are saying, oh, the law is that's the plea bargain agreement, then those judges will be wrong. All right. Yes. We, I'm not ready to go forward with the thing. Then we'll be in jury trial. All right. Macy Malone. President. All right. So did they give you, and if you want to hand that back. So jury trial is at 1.30, and you can put that in here. All right. Well, we, we're announcing not ready on trial because we were expecting a... Uh, oh, you all need to file a motion. I'll hear it and make a ruling on it. Okay. All right, Macy Malone, where are we on this case? No. Um, 
<clears throat> I stopped by County Court 14 on my way out, and uh, he wants me in a trial this morning. He wants to begin a jury trial at uh, 11. I'm sorry, which court is this? 14, County Court 14. Okay, so that's County Court 14? Exactly. So this is district court, so it takes precedent. I, he said that, and he said <laughs> that um, I need to come to determine if the state's ready, if we're actually going to go to trial. Oh, yeah, we're actually going to trial. And we'll be going to trial on his, uh, I think he has an injury to the elderly or something. So we'll be going to trial on that. Okay. All right, see you then. Uh, Sean Crispin. Judge, I'm present. So he is set on the 22nd next month, uh, next week. And then the other one is set on the 27th. So what I'm asking is if it's possible to do any of those on March 12th. When they come back. No, not for Chrisman. Okay. Yeah. That's the MTR. Yes, because that's been pending for a long time. No problem, Judge. So I'll take care of that next week. And then uh, the other one that just got indicted first setting, I believe that's uh, Victoria Bellas. It's set for the 27th. Is there any way to right. push that one to the 12th? All right. Yes. If I need to get a reset at all, we got you. Uh, no, she'll put it in the system. Okay. Thank you, Judge. Sure. Another, 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 another. Uh, just one moment. Does this one remain the same? Yes. And this one's the 11th. Yes. Morning, Judge. Thank Morning. you. Uh, update for the court. I, I did call the bondsman, um, Mr. Laura. Mr. Laura. Um, and they said that he has checked in, but they, he has to pay some, like, like, a reinstatement fee, which he's calling now to pay. Mm -hmm. As soon as that's done, they will do the, I guess, work through the process. I'm not quite sure how it works, Judge, but. Well, I fine. haven't signed it yet. Okay. So. If that information doesn't come to me today, this is going to get signed today. Understood, Judge. And okay. I think that he's, he's doing it now. As soon as I uh, as soon as soon I know that that's done, I'll make sure that it gets taken care of. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Appreciate it. Yes. Yeah, approach judge. Yes. My client wants to take the plea deal. All right. Can I see the file on Leonardo Carlos, please? Thank you. All right, we're back on the record in 2023 CR8667, State of Texas versus Leonardo Carlos. And can I have parties announced for the record for the state? Daniels, Clark, State of Texas. Defense. The chairman on behalf of the And are you Mr. Leonardo Carlos? Sure. Showing you the plea bargain page. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Sure. According to the plea, punishment is to be assessed at five years in the prison. There is a $500 fine. State recommends community supervision. This will run concurrent with county court cause number 710098, 71099, taking consideration 2023 CR 6643, county court cause number 713955, 713958, Ignition interlock for half the term VIP 
and DWI intervention. Did you understand that to be the plea? Yes, sir. State, is that the plea? Yes, sir. Defense, is that the plea? Yes. Showing you the waiver of appeal paragraph. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Did you sign it in both places? Sure. Did you understand by signing that you're waiving your right to appeal? The only items that can be appealed are written pretrial motions that have been filed, heard, and ruled upon by the court. Did you understand? Yes, Counsel, have there been any such motions? No. Next, I'm showing you outside the plea bargain agreement. State is requesting that your community supervision be for a term of five years. There'll be a TAP evaluation, 120 hours of community service restitution, two year driver's license suspension, 10 days house arrest in lieu of 10 days in the Bear County Jail. Did you understand those were recommendations from the state and the court does not have to follow those recommendations? Then to the offenses charge, how do you plead? Guilty, not guilty, or no contest? No contest. State any evidence. You know, state civil one and all attachments. Any objections? No good. Right. Showing you what's entitled waiver and consent to stipulation of testimony and stipulations. Did you review that document with your attorney? Did you understand it? Did you sign it in all the appropriate places? Yes, sir. Again, did you understand you have a right to jury trial, a right for you or your attorney to cross-examine and confront any witnesses the state would call and the right to remain silent? Yes, sir. Did you understand that today the state will be presenting evidence in the form of witnesses' statements and police reports, but most importantly, there'll be no live testimony. Did you understand? Okay. Court will find that defendant has knowingly and voluntarily waived and consented to stipulation of testimony and stipulations. Court will accept into evidence states exhibits one in attachments and the court will review the same. All right, after reviewing state's exhibits one and attachments, the court will find there is sufficient evidence to find you guilty and the court will find you guilty. Are you proceeding with sentencing? Yes, Your Honor. Anything you wish to say on behalf of your client? Well, you have an admission in your lock on your device. Yeah. Okay, you're all gonna have to speak up so that the court reporter can hear. And have you been abiding by the conditions of bond? And yes, sir. Not drinking alcohol? No. You want the judge to grant you probation or to continue you in uh, with the ignition in your office for one half of the time? Yes. All right. Do you have any children? No. Are you employed? Yes. What do you do? Electrician. And how long have you been doing that? Um, about 10 years. All right. Are you, do you own your own business or you I work, work under, for a company? I'm sorry? I work for a company. Okay. All right, this is what the court is gonna do. The court is gonna sentence you to five years in the prison, suspend it and probate it for five years. There's a $500 fine that will be probated. This will run concurrent with county court cause number 710098, county court cause number 71099, taking consideration 2023 CR 6643, County court cause number 713955, 713958. There's to be ignition interlock for half the term. VIP live. DWI intervention. DWI education. Two years driver's license suspension. 120 hours of community service restitution. You can either do those hours or pay them off at $7.25 per hour. There's gonna be 90 sober meetings in 90 days. With regards to the Bear County Jail or GPS, one or two ways. Either you can go to the Bear County Jail, do your 10 days, or either you will be on GPS for 30 days, partial for work, and it will be only for work. 
or either if you don't want to do work, you can be on full house arrest for 20 days. Which do you prefer? Uh, they go to work back to All right. So because of you, it appears you have on a mask. Yes, sir. So because of health issues at the jail, the court will grant you to do 30 days GPS partial for work. That means you can only go to work. There's no stop to the grocery store anywhere else or relatives home. You, yeah, you understand? I'm on GPS right now. You already okay. Know. So 30 days GPS partial for work in lieu of the Bear County Jail. There's to be regular reporting by Zoom or in person. There's to be regular UAs. Uh, we can do a top evaluation out of custody and a referral to felony drug court. Field visits one time per month for four months and then at probation, probation's discretion. Uh, probation, is there anything else he needs? Ah, thank you. Proof of employment within 15 days, there should be no employment as a home health care provider or with minors. Judge, after the 30 days, can he remove the GPS monitor? Yes, it's only for 30 days. He has it on that. All right, is there anything else, probation? Is there anything else you need from the court to be successful? Oh, Showing you what's entitled trial court certification of defendant's rights to appeal. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? And did you sign it? Sure. All right, if you'll step back a little bit. Because this is a plea bargain agreement, because I followed your plea bargain agreement, and because you waived your right to appeal, you do not have the court's permission to appeal. Because this is a felony conviction, you're not allowed to own or possess any weapons or ammunition. If you have a question over what a weapon or ammunition is, you'll need to speak to an attorney. Do you understand? Sure. All right, we can go off the record. In this court, communication is key to be successful on probation. If there's an issue, let probation know. If you feel like they're not addressing it, you can always come back to the court. Do you understand? Sure. All right, good luck to you. Thank you. Thank you. And Norma, I don't have that problem. Yeah, and if you could write this missile in there. Yeah. All right, the parties on Lazaro Espinosa Ramos. Court calls the case of Pleasant Lake versus Holicki et al. Your Honor, David Morris on behalf of Pleasant Lake Park Plaintiff. Your name? Ryan Oberholicki. Caitlin Childress. Say again. Caitlin Childress. Okay. Now, where are we on this, folks? Your Honor, on December 31st, Your Honor, uh, set this again for today for us, essentially a status conference, I would call it, where um, there was... Um, it was brought to the court's attention that the property was uninhabitable, using that term in a general sense, um, and that Miss Ch Childress, Miss Childress, and her two children should attempt to vacate the property sooner than the 30-day notice. And um, that's where we left it. I don't have any other information. Okay, and I think we gave you the information to Hawk and other things. What happened? Uh, me and the kids are staying next door. Um, me and, and my kids are staying next door with the neighbor. Um, my son's finishing out this week. And then uh, my mom's getting me a truck. She couldn't get it until this week. So, I mean, by the end of the week, all the stuff should be out. I called Cock, but their uh, appointments are scheduled out until April. And then she emailed me a list of things to get a hold of. So... Of places to get a hold of mm -hmm. to do that. All right. So, Mr. Olicki, you're out of the premises. Is that correct? For the most part, I was just staying there temporarily, just helping her pack. That's it. But I, I'm my mom, pretty much. So, okay. And your mom's getting you a truck, and then that's supposed to happen Friday. You said. It'll, yeah, by this week. Uh, right. She works. She's off Sundays and Mondays. So if I have to be able to get out there earlier in the day before she goes to work. So we're still trying to figure out which day is going to work for her for me to get a ride down there to get the truck. 
Okay. And so it's anticipated that at some point you're going to be out of the premises. It's probably within about a week and a half. Yeah, everything should be out, removed completely. Week and a half of today, from today, or? Yeah, from today, about a week and a half. Ma'am, do you agree with that timeline? You think so? So by the 23rd? And if the property is vacated by the 23rd, then you don't, you guys are not going to have an issue with it going back to the landlord. No. Okay. That actually may work then. If you can try to do it by the 22nd, it would be appreciated. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to then adjourn this matter to February 23rd. At what time would I? I'll just put them into a regular block. Because and your honor, would would it be? Would you like to discuss the counterclaim and that sort of stuff today, or? Yeah, let me get to that. Yeah. Two p.m. So it'd be February twenty third, two thousand twenty four at two p.m. All right. Now, as to the counterclaims that you have, what do you intend on doing with those? I'd still like to pursue it because it's. it's Pretty serious, though. Okay, so let me ask you this. Since we're really at a final settlement conference stage, um, Have you entered into any discussions with them about that? Um, I'm, I mean, I've had communications, but they don't really agree with any of it. Well, let me ask this. Who owns the, the trailer? You got a pleasant, the plaintiff owns the trailer and the land, the lot and the trailer. Okay. So have you made any demand about what you want from them? Yeah. Is that correct, counsel? You... I'm sorry, has he made a demand? Yeah. Well, he has filed an answer with a counterclaim um, and attached, it, it's not in, there was an email which listed the, money damages and it, it essentially comprised one half I would call ruined property and the other half would be uh, uh, kind of a tort claim a claim saying that, that, that the plaintiff brought this moldy situation upon them and it damaged him Miss Child Childress, Child, Childress. Childress and the two children and made a, play, a prayer for relief of approximately $50,000 uh, it's not, I don't know what the court's uh, record looks like, but it's not, it was not listed in the, what I believe to be the filed supplemental answers to complaint affirmative defenses and counterclaim. I don't believe that there was a prayer for relief. Um, not a specific prayer for relief in that uh, document. Are there photos of these items you're claiming are damaged? Um, there's not photos of the specific items, but just from the mold specialist, he told us anything, wood, stuffed animals, toys, plastics, anything that 
it was I, I, I understand that part i'm just saying uh i don't have pictures of like the dresser and stuff like that i mean i have pictures of like the carpet and let me ask you this If I were to decide this, how do I know these items that you listed existed? I mean, that's that's not really. I mean, it's really just like stuffed animals, toys, a dresser is like the only I furniture item. What you're telling me. How do I know they existed? I get you. I get you. Okay, so we have an answer to that. I mean, I could preside pictures on the return court date if needed but yeah i was i didn't know i wasn't thinking on that part i mean in you've attached a value to these items right How'd you come up with those values? Uh, pretty much, I just went like on Craigslist, Facebook Marketplace, and I just, it, it's very reasonable. I pretty much just got like the median of what it would cost to replace it. Like even a dresser, I've only claimed like $60. I mean, uh, you can get a dresser for $60. I mean, I don't need, you know, a $300 one or nothing like that. No. Well, Understand that if you're claiming that the plaintiff caused the damage, what you're going to be entitled to is really the value of the property destroyed. Okay. And so I would, I think the thing you need to think about is this that if you had a dresser, that let's say is 10 years old, right? It's not going to have a whole lot of value to it, right? Right. Furniture typically doesn't have a whole lot of value once it's used. I see on the your list that there's carpet. Well, Was that a rug or was it carpeting that was down in the premises? It's brand new carpet that we laid when we first moved in and the padding underneath. It was just in that one room. Okay. So how many years has the carpet been there? Probably just about a year. How much did you pay for the carpet? Uh, I couldn't... I don't have a receipt, but I attached a photo of the same carpet from. I see it, but it ran me probably about four hundred dollars ish. So what's the total amount you're asking for? Uh, from the damage claims or the whole thing? The whole thing. Uh, it came out to about roughly like 48000 ish And how much of that is damages? Uh, I'd probably say about around 1500 if I recall properly. I'm not 100%. 1500 in damages. The rest of it is what? Uh, mainly pertains to health issues, the environment we were in. I mean, that it could have caused some serious issues. We were trying to get mold tested as well, but according to them, if the kids okay. came, here's here's one of the things you're going to have to look at. At some point, you know that that mold is there, right? Correct. 
And so at that point that you realize that there's something there, you can't just sit there. Oh, no. It, once we notice the mold, we, I mean, we've been trying to move, honestly, for months now. It's just our sit <laughs> So with me being self-employed and like the requirements of places, it's okay. But you can't just sit there and have damages increase. I, I agree with that. That's why I made the landlord because it's the law. You have to mitigate those damages. So You're telling me we're trying to move. I mean, the last time I was here. Okay, so let's let me. Last time we were off. I don't know that there was an issue regarding mitigation because there were still people in the premises. Correct. But from the most specialist, he could have serviced the property if just the people were out. Because he said he would even have to remedy, you know, the items that are in the rooms too, or and see what's savable and what wouldn't. Be. So what does that mean? Like, like he could he could come in and remedy the entire property with just the human the people being out. Right. That doesn't seem to necessarily cut in your favor. Does it? I mean, I don't know. So why didn't, okay, let me ask it this way. Why didn't the mold specialist come in and remedy? Because we were still in the property. Okay. So then the reason things did not get corrected is not anything having to do with the plaintiff. It has to do with you. That's what I'm talking about, the mitigation issue. No, the litigation or the remedy thing just was just brought an issue. They just had this done probably within the last month. The mold has been going on for almost a year now. Right, but you can't <clears throat> you can't sit that there's mold. Right. At some point you realize that there's some damage to you occur. Right? All right. But hypothetically, yes. We haven't been mold tested yet. But I, I understand yet. At some point, the kids have to get moved out of their room. Right? Correct. Right. When did that happen? Uh, the beginning of last year. Okay. So at that point, let's just take that. You may have even known before. That. Beginning of last year, you know that there is a problem. Mm -hmm. Right? Correct. So you can't, and this is what I'm talking about in terms of the idea of mitigation. If you had said at that point, okay. We're all leaving here. We're going to a hotel. Fine. But you can't then sit in that circumstance and then say to plaintiff, well, you're going to have to pay us for all of this because we just were sitting You follow me? To a point, I yeah, I do. Okay, what part don't you understand? I mean, when we brought the issue up, I mean, to me, it should have been taken care of right then and there. And we that went. may be true, but you can't then just sit and let the circumstance exacerbate itself, and then claim everything in the world is plaintiff's fault. Well, I mean, I'm just a runner there. I don't feel like I. It's really my obligation to take 
tear of mold or something that's out of my control. I'm not even saying that. At the beginning of last year, at some point, you knew there was a problem significant enough that you moved the kids, right? Right. So at that point, even if just for the sake of the kids, it would have been better if we just all moved. I, I agree with that. If you just moved someplace else, let's say you had gone to a hotel down the street, and then you're stuck in the hotel down the street because then at that point, the landlord won't fix it. You, you've, in a sense, mitigated your damages to the best that you could because you've done something because, as you're claiming, the landlord didn't do it. Right. But that's not what happened here. What happened here, it seems to me, is you continued to stay in a situation that may have then increased loss for you. Guys, right? Well, you can't do that. I got you. So, part of the problem, and one of the reasons I bring that up, is because you're claiming, it seems to me that some of the stuff you're claiming, I don't know when that was damaged. I got you. Put it another way, if you had said, this place is doing whatever, it's probably damaging all of our stuff, and you guys get yourselves out, you move to a hotel, you then get your property out as best you could, put it in storage, and then say, Mr. Landlord, you need to fix this, that's a whole different ballgame. I got it. But that's not what happened here. In fact, the mitigation, so, in, in, and again, even at this point, right now, as we sit here today, you still haven't vacated the premises. My point to all of that is, and I just bring up the questions, quite frankly, that the court would be asking, would be asking about the value of the property. What did you purchase it for? You know, if, if I had to decide this case, I have to first of all know that the property existed. Put another way, you can't all of a sudden claim landlords responsible for the diamonds that fell through the floor because they didn't fix the mold and there was a floor and so now the diamonds are gone. Same thing with the dresser. I have no idea whether it was there. No, I'm I understand. presuming that there would be one. But I don't know. Then it's going to be the condition of that dress. So that if it was just a cardboard box that we called a dresser, that's a whole different ball game than if I've got something that real fancy or a thousand dollar dresser. <laughs> It's a whole different ballgame. I understand. But that, you need to understand that this is your counterclaim, and you're going to have to show that to the court. Yeah. Right? On top of that, that's where it kind of gets to this mitigation issue. And that's what I want you to understand, is that, and I'm just going to use the dresser. If I know that there's damage that's occurring to the dresser, 
And let's say I know it a year ago when you moved the kids. I can't then just leave that dresser there to presumably get more damage and then blame the landlord. I get where you're coming from. If I could have, if I, let's say this dresser was a thousand dollar dresser, if I can get the dresser out a year ago, do some remediation on it, clean it up, and now it, eh, it might only be worth 800 Okay? Then maybe you can go to the landlord and say, yeah, you know, there was about 200 bucks of damage that occurred to us. That's very different than the same scenario. I had this $1,000 dresser. I just leave it there. And let it get worse. And just let it go to zero where I can't do anything with it and then say to the landlord, you owe me a thousand bucks. Right? I get you 100%. The other thing that you're going to have to realize is in every, and I don't mean this badly, but it's just a state, every man's junk is their treasure. <laughs> right there's stuff in my house that has a great deal of value to me it has no value to anybody else I don't know why but it just doesn't you're correct so some of the stuff really in all of these when you're talking furniture that's been used yeah. Almost can have no value in a lot of ways. They're very de minimis value. Carpeting. You know, you put carpeting down, paid about 400 bucks. By the time somebody starts walking on that, that carpeting is not worth 400 what you pay. <laughs> right. Right. Then it's going to depend on how many, what was the year rating on it? How long was that carpet supposed to last? Right. What was the damage? And then understand you're then going to get into that issue of mitigation. Could you have taken that once you know that there's a problem? Could you have taken that carpet out to preserve it in some fashion? Gotcha. You follow me? Yes, sir. Now, what's the other part of these damages you're claiming? Uh, the bulk of it is just like the health risks that were presumed to the premises that any, okay. anyone could have really gotten sick. All right. <clears throat> you pre- so here's what's going to happen. Here's what's going to have to happen. You can go get mold test. Right. Yeah, once we're out of the premises, we already plan on doing that. Okay. So what are you claiming came out of this for all of you? I mean, we don't know if anything, but I mean, I've been coughing like a lot more. I mean, my kid's been... Okay, welcome to the land of COVID. <laughs> right. Go ahead. But my son's been, yeah, same thing, you know, getting a lot more sicker than often i mean i can't really prove that it was because of the mold okay but listen that's what you're going to have to do i mean if you're telling me that the landlord's responsible for that okay that's what you're going to have to show the court which is going to require medical testimony it's going to require a whole lot of other things because even and I just want you to understand what you're doing. Even if you go get mold tested and a doctor comes back and says, here's something in your system that we think is normal. You got to get this that, that doctor here to testify. They got to have a basis upon which they're doing, of which they're coming to that conclusion, right? Let's say you're successful in doing Right. You're then going to run into that problem of mitigation. 
Because then did this problem, just presuming that there's an issue, did this problem happen okay. in the last six months? Did it happen a year ago? Do we not know when it happened? All of that stuff would have to be pinpointed. And if they say, well, this would have been something that would have developed for a year and just this constant sort of barrage of mold spores is what caused this. Well, then we get back to the thing a year ago. We didn't know the kids are big. Why didn't you move yourself? And can I fairly hold the landlord accountable for that, for what may be that issue, when you didn't protect yourself? I got you. There is then going to be this issue, because so, I want you to be clear on what you're facing and what you're going to have to show the court. There's going to be an issue of you came up with a number. Don't know where you came up with that number, but also as to whether or not legally you would be entitled to that, because this is really a, a contract case. So there's that huge legal issue that is also going to be out there. You follow me? Yes. So what I'm going to do is I had this set for final settlement conference because I was hoping that we could probably get this but I mean, things were taking their own turn wherever, so it didn't work out as I planned. I'm just going to go to, you know what I'm going to do? No, I'm going to still give you the February 23rd day. And that's really regarding the surrender of the property, right, at 2 p.m. I'm also going to set another day so we can come back on a final settlement conference on the counterclaims. And I'll make that March 5th, 2024 at 9 a.m. Both dates. So this, we can do the 23rd by Zoom, right? And then the other one I need to get back in person. You're... Have you ever been through the discovery process? Core. Okay. So, look. Let me just ask you this. All right. To both of you. What do you guys want with this? I mean, because, and here's the reason, you don't have to answer me, quite frankly, I, if you don't want to. But here's what I'm saying. I guess what I'm getting at is. You guys are going to get here because at some point I'm going to set a trial, right? But even before we get to the trial part, there's going to be discovery. They're going to want to know certain things that you're claiming. Right, and it, and I would imagine, although sure counsel is probably a much better attorney than I ever was, so he might ask something else. But just the questions that I pose today to you is just a small piece of what they're going to be looking. And I just have a feeling, folks, you're going to have one of the most miserable experiences of your entire life. Now, if you want to go through that, that's fine. I'll be here. Right? I, but I think maybe, and I don't know what the plain disposition will be, but maybe you should take some of what I gave you 
said to you today, come up with something that might be realistic and propose it to them to see if you can resolve it. I really don't think you guys want to go through a trial. If you want to, hop on, let's roll. But I don't think that's what you want to do. Follow me? Yeah, I respect your your opinion too. Uh, well, I, I'm just telling you, I've been through a lot of trials. I've Even as a judge, sometimes I don't want to be there. <laughs> All right. And I know the litigants are having an even worse time than I am. All right. But but you're just going to be there. You're going to have to you know, be answering questions, not just in trial, but before trial to give them information that you may not answer. Because some of the questions I asked you today, you couldn't answer. And those are going to be the basics of what it is. All right. So I've given you those two dates. You guys need to think about what you really want to do. My big concern, as you could probably get it from the last time that we were here, was that there were these two kids that were in this place and they needed to get out. That was my main concern. Absolutely. Yep, I'm moving as fast as I can. Pardon? <laughs> I said I'm moving as fast as I can. No, I... I I get you, and I don't say it being critical, right? I, I it's from a father's standpoint. Yeah, yeah, no. I'm a, I'm a dad, <laughs> and I, it really was almost probably my mother challenging me or channeling me, telling me that, you know, and I'll put it this way in a colloquial sense. She said, "There's a big big people be damned. What about the little people?" That's kind of how I looked at it. <laughs> All right. Those are the ones that needed to be protected. You guys have to figure out a way that you're going to be moving on. I'm going to suggest to you, if you want to come here, you can move, you can do it. We'll do it. But you guys just need to find a way to move on. Put this part behind you and just go about setting up your life and making sure to continue. But people don't follow my advice all the time, so that's okay. Guess that's why I'm here. Okay, so we'll see you guys then. You guys think about it, all right, and then we'll come back on those two dates and hopefully get it. Yes, go ahead. Yes, uh, <clears throat> your honor. Um, there are some appliances. I don't know how many, but stoves, appliances being kept outside the, the property. Um, from the, the defendant's uh, self-employment. And I would request that... Um, yeah, that's that, that's going to be removed as long as with the trailer that's on there too. Thank thing. you, Rob. Okay, these are not appliances in the house. This is part of what you do. Uh, yeah, it's it's like in a field tucked away. He gave me permission for it, but I understand why he wants it all removed now. Right. It's a separate lot. appliances in a field. Okay. It's a separate lot. <laughs> That's fine. If vacating the premises means you're getting everything off of there. Correct. Thank you. Thank you, Judge. Appliances running through a field. <laughs> All right. Thank you, folks. Thanks, Judge. We'll see you a couple Fridays from now. And now that is for, for Zoom, correct? Yeah, you can okay. you can either come to the courtroom or you can do it by Zoom. Okay. Either way. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. She needs to close her mouth for her to come back. Yes. <laughs> okay. That's how Daryl Martin used to act, and I used to have to drag her back into the classroom. I heard nothing. Yeah, what? <laughs> My hearing has been tested. It still works. <laughs> <laughs> I give you a little background. I, I want to get into a balance of I saw my doctor in October, and I'm going to get in. Hang on one second. Ma'am, can you come up to the podium? 
What's your name? My name is Diana Luck. I am Ryan Halicki's mother. And did you have something you wanted to say? Well, you have a whole lot before when you were leaving. Yeah, because it just upsets me because I think it's kind of being pushed over to the material things and his property. When in reality, this issue has been going on. I understand all of that, ma'am. I've been through every one of these hearings. But one of the things is, is that people may not like what I say or what I'm telling somebody. I understand but you that. Will always leave here in a respectful manner. I know. I have a big mouth sometimes. You do. I apologize. And that's why I could hear it. So I'm going to give you this. I'm just going to let you go with a warning this time. But if you come back and you act that way again, that gentleman behind you, that's who you'll be going with. Am I clear? Yes, sir. Thank you. You may leave. Thank you. I thought I was nice. You know, I just mm-hmm. like Barton, Power, they're all disrespectful to me. Or me. <laughs> it's hard, baby. All right. <laughs> Who are we? Is Miss Power ready on hers? Yes, you're on Take care, sir. Oh, this one should be easy.